Welcome everybody. In this uh, presentation I will uh, introduce the paper H Infinity Interactive Controller Design for Teaching Purposes, which is a joint work by Jose Manuel Diaz and Professor Sebastián Dormido, Bernard Nicolau and myself, Ramon Costa. Uh, this is, it is a joint work from UNED, Universidad Nacional de Educación a Distancia, and UPC, Universidad Politécnica de Catalunya. In this work, we are going to introduce a new methodology to introduce students to edge infinity optimization to develop closed loop uh, loop shaping uh, methodologies. In this work, we are going to assume the scheme that you can see in the slide. This is the conventional uh, scheme in a control loop and the most relevant goal of this uh, control loop is uh, to track the references okay but also uh, rejecting the effect of the disturbances and additionally we would like not to amplify the noise in any of the sig signals in the in the control loop in particular in the control action and the output okay so we will care about the closed loop stability the performance and their robustness. Although there are many methodologies to design controllers, we are going to focus on the frequency domain. Okay, the frequency domain is one of the most powerful techniques we have for linear systems. Okay, uh, it's also a concept which is uh, being introduced to, to the students in many other fields, so it's very interesting to talk uh, to introduce uh, control through frequency domain analysis for engineers because they already are familiar with these concepts okay uh, this uh, uh, approach allows also to f to work simultaneously in performance and robustness over the same uh, uh, figures and over the same picture so it's not necessary to look simultaneously to several places and yeah that's yeah, this is why we use this approach additionally this is a, a concept uh, designing in the frequency domain which is introduced in many introductory courses so for master students it's a, an approach which is more or less known so what we're going to to do is we are going to increase their knowledge about this uh, this concept and introduce new tools for them Loop shaping is a very popular design technique in the frequency domain. Usually it is performed over the open loop frequency response. Uh, this is an indirect approach because performance is defined in the closed loop transfer functions. Additionally, it is necessary to look and try to simultaneously modify the gain and the phase plot, which, although they are coupled, are two different figures. As it is well known, linear systems are subject to constraints. They are defined using the closed loop transfer function, so it is not so straightforward to see their effort over the open loop transfer functions. To perform this open loop shaping in introductory courses, students are introduced to algorithm approaches. In many cases, students pay more attention to the algorithm steps than to the goals to be achieved. Due to this, we considered to introduce the students in the closed loop loop shaping methodology. This approach proposes to directly shape the curves where the different concepts are defined, so it is a more natural methodology from our point of view. In this slide, you can see the complementary equation and the equation appear in the Waterbed theorem. These are two of the most popular constraints appearing in classical control. As you can see, both of them are defined over closed loop transfer functions. Additionally, it is shown how to compute the distance from the polar curve to the minus one point in the complex plane, which is a relative robustness magnitude. It can be computed using the closed loop transfer function. So robustness can also be analyzed through closed loop transfer functions. To perform closed loop 
loop shaping, it is necessary to define which is the desired shape for the closed loop transfer function. As an example, in the case of the sensitivity function, it is necessary that it takes small values in the low frequency range. This is, implies a small steady state error. Graphically speaking, implies being below a certain rectangle shown in orange in the figure. Additionally, in the mid and high frequency range, it is necessary that the sensitivity function does not take big values. These values would reduce the system robustness. This can be graphically visualized through the bones defined by, by the green rectangle in the figure. Okay? So with that, we have a basic idea of which is the shape we would like for the sensitivity function in, in a regular design. In our previous works, we have exploited these concepts in an interactive tool which allows to perform closed loop loop shaping completely interactively. This tool is available for free at the indicated web page. Manual closed loop shaping can be easy to do when only one transfer function is involved. Uh, when more than one transfer function are involved, this may be not so easy because you need to, to look simultaneously to different curves and you only will have a few parameters to modify. Additionally, uh, although one solution could be obtained, this, uh, the obtained solution may be not the, on, the optimal one. Okay. Uh, H-infinity optimal control can offer a solution to this. Unfortunately, introducing H-infinity optimal theory to students might not be so easy. To overcome this, uh, this a graphical and interactive methodology has been developed. This methodology will be sketched in, in the following. In order to apply H-infinity optimal control to perform the closed loop shaping, the, the first step is transforming the specification into a cost function. To do this, the bonds over the sensitivity frequency response are written, are written in terms of a continuous transfer function. Although higher order transfer functions could be used, usually first order ones are, uh, are good enough. Uh, the idea behind this is to obtain a sensitivity function, which is always below the defining Waiting the five the defined waiting function sorry. Now these specifications will be transformed into an H infinity optimal control problem. In the left figure, you can see the lo closed loop system including the waiting function which defines the specifications. In the right one, an equivalent LFT representation is shown. Once in the LFT representation, the optimization formulation is quite straightforward. The H infinite norm of the product of the sensitivity function by the weighting function gives an idea between uh, an idea of the distance between the, the sensitivity function frequency response and the specifications. If this H infinity norm is less than one, the specifications will be fulfilled. In this sense, the optimal controller will be the one that minimizes the H-infinity norm, this H-infinity norm. The literature contains methods to, to obtain the solution of the H-infinity optimal problem. Okay. Uh, these uh, methods can be used to obtain an approximation to the optimal controller using an iterative approach. To support the teaching using the, the proposed approach, an interactive application has been developed. This application allows to define interactive and graphically the specification, internally solve the H-infinity control problem, so a controller is obtained, and finally visualizes automatically the, the effect of this controller over the closed loop uh, systems, or over the closed loop frequency response. The application has been developed using Sysquake and it is completely graphical and interactive. This corresponds to the uh, application main view. The application is composed by different parts. In here you have a block scheme describing the scheme of the closed loop system under study. You have the plan, the controller and the weighting function. Okay. In here you have a, a description 
which is also interactive of the active element in this case for example the plan in here you have uh, some information about the fulfillment or not of the different specification in this case there are there's only any specification over the sensitivity function so it's which is the ana the analysis which is being performed how it is checked if this specification is fulfilled or not and a button which color means if the specification is fulfilled or not in, in being meaning in green that it is fulfilled if it's in red it's not fulfilled in here you have a, a pole zero map which is completely interactive and can be used to uh, define the plan in here you have a, a body of the figure under analysis in this case the plant this figure can also be used to define the the plant okay for example this is the pole of this system and you can change the game through here okay and finally in here you have the the step response of the closed loop system under analysis the output and the control action okay you, you can also change the there are different type of plans and you can work with if you click here you can in here you can select one of these plans okay and there's also a generic one which is composed by a uh, plan composed by again zeros and poles okay okay uh, if you click in the within function for the sensitivity function it appears in here the sensitivity function the bounds defined over the sensitive function this thing can be modified in here completely interactive okay automatically the controller is being redesigned okay when i modify in here the controller is automatically redesigned it appears in here it appears the uh, the uh, h infinity norm of w a which is the w e multiplied by yes okay when we want to to shape simultaneously different uh, uh, different transfer functions then appears the specification over cs in here okay you have w w which is the other specific the other weighting function that is usually usually use and you can also define it uh, more specified in here okay everything is completely interactive Okay. And when you are performing metric sensitivity, you will have two specifications. And as you can see in here, in this case, both of them are satisfied because the buttons are in green. The following, we are going to show how we use uh, uh, the tool to solve a concrete uh, problem. Okay. In particular, we are going to, to shape a closed loop system composed by a plan, the plan shown in, in the slide and trying to define uh, the specifications defined by uh, weighting function, which is the one you can see in here. So let's first thing we are going to do is we are going to, def to select uh, a plan, which is similar to the one we want to define, this one, for example. I select uh, the order three. And that's it. Now we have the, that's the plan we would like to work with. Okay. Uh, second step, we define the specifications. Uh, but first, I'm going to place uh, the, the the frequent the frequency range in here, which I, I'm interested in. Okay. Uh, I will select a fixed uh, frequency range. Okay. I select a low frequency range because it's where I'm going to define the specifications. And the others are just more or less approximate just to have a good view because sometimes it's not easy that the tool selects a, an appropriate range of frequencies, but you, you can always tune it uh, automatically uh, and manually if uh, necessary. Okay, so I define the specifications. Uh, first, I define the the frequency range like that. Okay. Then I then I define a small uh, small error in here, which 
which is 0 0.001. Okay, so that's the specifications that the problem was giving us. Note that selecting ms equal to 2 provides a gold drawbleness. Okay, as you can see here, this complementary sensitivity function does not cross to match the 0 dB, so you will have a nice distance to the minus 1 point. You have a, a minus uh, well, a very small steady state error, which is you can see in here. Okay, but and, and this will be a very slow system, okay, because we have selected a range of frequencies which is very small. Okay. Uh, you can also see that in here you have CS, which is which has a low pass profile, which is very nice. Okay, so that's a, that would be a very good design for us. Although the previous design is technically correct because it fulfills the specifications, uh, the closed loop system is extremely slow. So we are going to re rethink the design, trying to make it faster. Okay. So what we do is we are going to prepare a new design where the closed loop system is fra is faster than the previous one. Okay. So. To make the system much faster, we are going to change the WB. Okay? In particular, we are going to place one in here, which is a really big increase. Okay? We need to change the frequency scale to, to focus where we are really interested. Okay? This is, for example, three. three. Okay. As you can see in here, I mean, S fulfills the nice specifications. I mean, they are, the system is a simple system, it's a non-minimum phase, so we can impose any frequency response in over one of the closed-loop transfer functions. But if you look to CS, CS is taking really big values in this frequency range, which is high frequency range. I mean, this would imply that the closed loop system will amplify a lot the uh, uh, the noise over this frequency. So this is not a, a good design for us because although S is fulfilling the specifications, CS it's it's taking very big values and this is this is not very convenient. So we need to rethink. Or to avoid this problem, we turn on the, sen the mixed sensitivity problem. This, has, this allows us to introduce uh, new specifications. Mm -hmm. Now, on another uh, sensitivity function, the CS function, the, this will, will allow us to define new specifications. Okay? If we play a little with these specifications, we can achieve a new design that fulfills both the specifications on the sensitivity function and the CS. The CS is keep at smaller levels. I mean, the amplification will be not so big. This is a nice property from the mixed sensitivity function that allows us to shape simultaneously different uh, transfer closed loop. Just to conclude, in this work, we have introduced a methodology to introduce the closed loop shaping through optimal H infinity control uh, to students. Uh, this is a methodology which allows to internalize relevant concepts instead of focusing on mathematical tools. Uh, this, this but allows students to take profit from these powerful tools we have nowadays. In the following, we are going to focus uh, in modifying the tool just to introduce planned uncertainty and try to visualize this uncertainty in a graphical manner. Okay. Additionally, other things that we are going to work is the obtain low order controllers because H infinity tend to have uh, to generate very high order controllers. Okay, and finally, we thank thank the audience for being with us and don't hesitate to contact us if you are interested in our work. Thank you very much.